Okay. Uh, does it look better when I sit up and my back is straight rather than I feel like this is kind it of doesn't make that doesn't much make that much difference. Way, okay. Okay. <sighs> my face is getting stuck. <laughs> You've got the kind of face that wouldn't matter which way it got stuck. But when I get so nervous, good. my eye twitches. You know, it's really <laughs> disconcerting to have your eye going. We're ready to get speed. Ready? ready? Oh, okay. Kelly, I've been looking forward to talking with you because um, ever since I saw you in Reuben Reuben, and then when I found out you were starring with Harrison Ford in this picture, Witness, I thought, this woman's middle name has to be Cinderella. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, yes, I've been very, very lucky. I don't know, Cinderella? <laughs> it's incredible, though, Kelly. You know, I know hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands of actors and actresses. And it is the kind of story that everybody dreams that will happen to them. Uh, if if you're, the information I have on you is correct, you were a drama student when you went into Reuben Reuben. Mm, yes, I was studying at Juilliard, and, and I was shooting Reuben Reuben in my spare time on weekends and coming back up to Juilliard and doing a restoration comedy. So I was very, very fortunate to be, have that opportunity. It was uh, just absolute luck, absolute luck. And, um, but what was the entree to Reuben Reuben? Uh, you mean how I got uh -huh. to do it? Well, I was, it's sort of a long story. Um, I was waiting tables, and I would ran into a man that I worked with in California, he and his cousin. We went out, we had drinks one night, and his cousin, who was Philip Epstein, said, you are Geneva. And I said, what are you talking about? And the guy said, well, you are Geneva. I can't tell you, but you are Geneva. And I said, well, okay. And the guy left, called me two years later, and he said, listen, my dad's just uh, finished this script. Will you come in and read for it? And I said, sure. And things got delayed. So finally, by October, November, I went in, and they, I met with them twice, and they offered me the role. And I said, well, you know, I really can't do it because I just got a lead in a play, and I'm sorry. <laughs> but I guess they wanted me so much that they worked it out with my teachers at Juilliard and my director of the play that I was doing at the time. And that's sort of how it happened. Now, what about Witness? Was it on the strength of, of what you did in Reuben Reuben that you got Witness? I, Peter had seen Reuben Reuben, and I think that he was interested. He hadn't really found... Uh, the the woman he wanted to play Rachel and um, and I'd met with Peter and then I did a screen test with a, a terrible cold sore on my face it's there for life <laughs> please destroy that film um, and I was offered the role shortly afterwards yeah and I think I think it was because of Reuben Reuben is it true that you went to live with an Amish family so that you could absorb the atmosphere and yeah, I, I lived with an Amish woman and her seven children. She's a widow, and um, I lived with them for a few days. I didn't stay great amounts of time, but I did spend a month down in Pennsylvania doing research, learning a dialect, learning uh, German-Dutch, what they call Dutch. Um, and I, uh, I lived with her for a few days and milked cows, was up at four in the morning. It's the time you usually go to bed. <laughs> And milk cows and planted potatoes and seeded alfalfa. It was really terrific. What are some of their, I guess, what we might call taboos? In other words, things that they don't believe in and don't do, even in this modern world. Well, they don't believe in modern amenities, things that make your life easier, per se, electricity, cars. Um, they do use diesel engines for milking their cows because of regulations. I mean, you it's just not a healthy way to milk it and put it in a container and they have to keep the milk cold till the milk truck comes but and they also they don't believe in making graven images of themselves so they have no pictures of humans in their homes they have a lot of photographs of nature a lot of postcards every time I write to them I send them a postcard of something natural you know and um, they're allowed to have mirrors though because that is an image that you walk in front of and it goes away the minute you walk by it how did you react to all of that? I thought it was rather fascinating. It's so opposite. Uh, living in New York, and um, especially in our society where we are so uh, 
object oriented. I mean, the, the, you're 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 qualified as a person by the kind of car you have, by the kind of house you have, how nice your furniture is. It was very refreshing to go into a society and to actually get to know people who didn't care. Do you know, I wasn't Kelly McGillis, somebody who had done Reuben Reuben. I was just a girl to them. And I was a girl who was an actress who was going to be an Amish woman. And they thought that was very funny because I walked around in blue jeans and hiking boots. And they said, you'd be an Amish woman? Right. <laughs> sure. <laughs> but um, so it was very refreshing to know that there are types of people. And I think that that's absolutely changed my perspective in a lot of things that I see. I now have a new apartment and I haven't bought a stick of furniture because <laughs> I think I don't really need a sofa. Do you know? I don't really need that. And so maybe eventually I'll buy a sofa. But everybody thinks I'm crazy now. They go, why don't you have a sofa? I don't know. <laughs> what was their attitude about the fact that a movie was going to be made and what were their concerns? I think that they uh, were fascinated by it. I think that they were intrigued to meet us all, and they were very intrigued to watch us shooting. I mean, they would uh, stop work and watch us for a while, which is an amazing thing, considering that, that their belief is work. They, you know, their lunch is about 20 minutes, and they come in, they eat real quick, and they go right back out to work. It's not a leisurely meal. Um, Had they ever seen a movie, any of them? I, I don't know. People that I talk to know. But I do know of some younger kids who have, because they believe in adult baptism, which you aren't a member of the church until you're baptized. And um, when you're younger, you can get away with a lot of things. Do you know, you're not shunned, let's say, for going to, to see a film. And um, I think they're fascinating. Their concerns, I think, were mostly that we would depict the Amish honestly and not make fun of them and not make a social comment on them, a judgment. Is Rachel totally viable, you think, to the Amish? In other words, could there be an Amish woman that would be like Rachel? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I mean, because you're Amish doesn't mean that you don't feel, you don't have passion. You, you, the wonderful thing about Rachel is she's a woman, and she has passion. And the, the great thing about working on Rachel was to have that conflict with inside yourself you know, her impulses of being a woman towards John Book and the impulses of being an Amish woman. And that was the fascinating thing to work with on her. I mean, it was very challenging. Well, also, Kelly, it is the fascination for those of us watching the film. I like the picture very much, okay. and I think you give a wonderful performance. The juxtaposition of the two cultures, I think, is just fascinating. Mm -hmm. I hope the picture does well for all of you. Oh, I hope so, too. And thanks for talking with us here today in Los Angeles. Thank you.